Please note this presentation may contain forward-looking statements that involve risks, uncertainties, and assumptions. Further information on these risks can be found in the documents that we file with the U.S. Securities and Exchange Commission. With that, I'd like to turn this call over to Aaron Levy, Box CEO and co-founder. Thanks, Cynthia, and thank you all for joining us today. We have had an incredible BoxWorks thus far, and it's just getting started. This is a two-day virtual event, and we have thousands of customers from all around the world attending uh, and tens of thousands of, of folks uh, you know, viewing uh, all the various content. So we're really excited about the event. At Box, our mission is to power how the world works together. And at BoxWorks, we're going to be making a series of announcements around what the future looks like with our platform. In just a few moments, we're going to have D Diego, as Cynthia mentioned, our chief product officer, talk about some of the announcements that we made just this morning to all of our customers. But we have a ton more in store throughout the rest of the conference. So we started Box in 2005 with a simple mission. We wanted to make it easy to access and share and collaborate on any information from anywhere at any time. And we evolved that mission to really being about how uh, the world works together and being able to power that for all of our customers. And in, during the pandemic in the past couple of years, this mission has become even more important to all of our customers globally uh, and really ultimately uh, drives the opportunity that we have going forward. Today, Box works with over 100,000 customers and across 67% of the Fortune 500. We're incredibly proud to be able to work with everything from fast-growing technology startups like Spotify or Airbnb, all the way to some of the world's largest uh, organizations like General Electric or IBM, AstraZeneca, and many more that have adopted Box broadly throughout their organizations. What all of these companies have in common, whether in life sciences or the tech industry or manufacturing or consumer products, is fundamentally work is changing in their organizations. And again, in the past couple of years, we've seen this change rapidly accelerate. Uh, the pandemic changed everything about what work looks like and where work is going to be going in the future. When we just compare and contrast how work used to happen with how it works today, almost everything is different. We're working from anywhere. So every enterprise we talk to wants to be able to access information from any time, anywhere, any location. They're no longer just working within the four walls of a single office building, but instead teams are distributed and dispersed across a variety of locations and geographies. That means that companies need to be able to get access to their most important information from anywhere. We're also no longer just working with a few people that surround us inside of our office building and a local team, but instead working as a network across boundaries to be able to move any business process and project forward. So we are working in a much more distributed fashion. Digital is now at the center of how we work. It used to be that a lot of our work was analog, and then we digitized that work after the business process was accomplished. Well, today that doesn't work anymore because as we've gone remote and as we've gotten distributed, digital is the way that we bind all of our distributed work together. So it's at the center of fundamentally of how we work. And you'll see this tie into a number of our product announcements that we made at BoxWorks today for all of our customers, where we're changing the way they work when digital is at the center of how they're doing everything. And as work has gone digital, it means we have more data than ever before. There's a massive abundance of information being created across any kind of device, any location. We have more content generated than ever before that companies have to be able to work with. And with all this data, we need automation. We simply cannot throw uh, humans just at these problems. We have to be able to scale uh, our workflows, our business processes by leveraging automation. So you're going to see automation as a major theme, both in our strategy today, but also in what we're going to be doubling down on going forward. And then finally, as we have more data, we're working in more locations, we're working across a broad network, we can no longer protect our information just by securing the perimeter of our organization. It doesn't work just to throw a firewall at this problem and assume that we're going to be able to protect our most valuable information. We now need to secure the flow of information as it's being accessed from anywhere in any location, and in particular, as it's being shared and collaborated on by people outside of our enterprise. So when we think about how much work has changed from three years ago and before to today and going forward, everything is different. And at the center of this work is our content. It's our most important intellectual property and business information that we work with. Every single business runs on content, whether it's marketing agencies or media companies that are producing critical intellectual property or consumer product companies that are designing a brand new product and bring that to life through CAD designs and prototype files and brainstorms or if it's through life sciences organizations that have to do cr mission critical research and development and be able to collaborate across a variety of partners all around the world, content is at the center uh, and heart of how we work. And every single line of business runs on content. Again, we talked about product development being in CAD designs. Finance teams run on contracts and invoices and financial records and data and models that they have to be able to build out. Operations team needs supply chain data and be able to work across a global uh, uh, ecosystem of partners. Sales teams are working with critical digital assets and contracts that they have to work with customers on or sales presentations to be able to close the next big deal. HR teams are dealing with reams of data uh, when it comes to HR records, contracts, and other employee information. 
and marketing teams are generating a wealth of digital asset content that needs to be secured, protected, and collaborated around. So in every vertical and in every line of business, businesses today are running on content. And yet, when we go to a lot of organizations, when we first start our conversation with an enterprise, oftentimes they're not managing that content securely or strategically. They have content fragmented across a wide variety of technologies and systems. There's content in legacy document management or enterprise content management technologies. There's content inside of network file shares or behind the firewall. There's content in, uh, in shadow IT tools that have been brought in by end user employees. Or there's content that's fragmented across workflow and point solutions that, that end users or lines of business have brought in. The challenge with this content fragmentation is that it means that we have massive security risks and compliance risks. Our content is now in too many different silos, so we can't manage it or centralize it or understand who has access to what. That creates major risks around security, especially in an age where we're seeing increased ransomware attacks and internal and external threats. This fragmentation also leads to slower productivity. If an employee or a team or department doesn't know what content to work on because they don't know what system is the source of truth or what's the authoritative copy of a marketing asset or a project plan, that slows down productivity massively. And finally, it means that enterprises are dealing with a, an increase of cost and complexity uh, by managing so many other legacy systems. They have to have all of the technology that gets implemented and then integrated and then the human and operational time that goes into working with those systems. And especially in this economic environment, it is untenable to have content fragmented across all of these redundant silos that cost a tremendous amount of money to maintain and operate. And so our vision is to really end this problem. We are building out the singular content cloud to power the full life cycle of content in a single cloud platform. And as we've talked about in the past and we've been showing off to our customers, that, that uh, platform is all about powering the full end-to-end -end life cycle. Everything from the moment the content gets ingested into the cloud to when that, that data needs to be secured and protected from ransomware attacks or other threats to being able to classify that content so you know what you're working with to collaborating in real time on nearly every file type in the cloud, as well as new file types that didn't exist just a couple of years ago, as you'll see with products like Box Canvas and Box Notes or being able to uh, drive automated workflows. Uh, so anything from an invoice process to a contract lifecycle process, getting an e-signature at the end of a workflow that deals with mission critical contracts, being able to publish content to teams and departments and throughout the enterprise, or get rich insights and analytics so you know exactly what's happening to your content, who it's being shared with, who's accessed it, how popular is certain content, so you can make key business decisions from that data. And then finally, being able to retain that content at the very end of the process. That is the full life cycle of content that our customers are dealing with, and we are building out the leading platform to have an integrated solution with all of these capabilities. So customers don't have to go out and buy separate technologies from separate vendors and integrate these tools themselves. They get a single platform that powers that full life cycle. And most importantly, that platform then extends uh, into every other application that our customers are working with. One thing that I'm incredibly proud of is the openness and interoperability of the Box platform. And one great way of identifying and highlighting how significant this is for our strategy Throughout BoxWorks and CIO Works, we've had Thomas Kurian, the CEO of Google Cloud, Arvind from IBM, uh, Eric uh, from Zoom, Yamini from HubSpot, G2 who runs WebEx at Cisco, uh, and many other partners, Kirk uh, from Microsoft, showing how well Box is integrated across all of the technology that they are managing and running for their customers. So you can see that we live and breathe openness and operability and interoperability across the entire stack of technology that our customers are working with. What you're going to see from us going forward is both a continued doubling down in that full life cycle that, that uh, extends the full value of content in an enterprise, as well as ensuring we've got a, a powerful open platform that integrates into our customers' most important software, whether that's Microsoft Teams, Microsoft Office, uh, or other applications they've chosen like Slack or Salesforce or ServiceNow, WebEx, Zoom, IBM technology, Google Workspace, and many other applications. And increasingly importantly for our customers, the ability to take the value from our Box platform and extend it into their own applications. So being able to develop custom apps built on our APIs as well has become increasingly important. So at BoxWorks, we are super excited to unveil a whole bunch of new innovation that our customers have both been asking for, as well as things are going to continue to leapfrog the rest of the market. And I'm excited to introduce Diego, who's going to walk through some of the updates and announcements that we made earlier today to our customers. Diego, over to you. And now I'm super excited to now move to describe the road, all the product roadmap that we want to share with our customers and for you to basically see what's uh, expected in the near term. So we are going to cover all the aspects of the content cloud where enterprises get frictionless security and compliance across the, all their content, seamless collaboration and workflow, um, and basically across remote, hybrid, and in-person teams, as Aaron described earlier, so we can work from anywhere and in any of the, the scenarios, and also the integrations with all the different apps that are so prevalent now uh, and so varied that we are consolidating, but also allowing the, to work basically from anywhere, no matter where the content was created. 
So uh, moving forward, we're going to basically start with a roadmap that is centered around these key differentiators. Well, we will start first with the collaboration and workflow section. So our goal at Box is to empower teams with the tools to collaborate securely and efficiently, no matter where they might be in the world. When it comes to how people work around the world, there is now a new normal. And while hybrid work promises great enhancements and extraordinary flexibility to get work done how and where we're most productive, it also presents a challenge where we want to make sure that we can engage these first teams while limiting the online burnout and also provide ways to innovate and collaborate visually. Also managing the complexity, the complexity and the risks and cost of apps the, and the app sprawl that basically can range from fragmented technology tools to security and compliance issues. So regardless of an organization's size, it needs to be more flexible and there are digital ways of working that require this innovation. So enterprises now need a collaboration strategy that puts the right tools into the hands of your people and empowers the term and, and the way they collaborate seamlessly so there's innovation around the information that drives the organization. So Box is rapidly evolving to be both a catalyst and an enabler for that change. It's been part of our vision from the beginning and this year, we're focused on delivering modern collaboration experiences that inspire users to get work done however and wherever they want with new higher value functionality to help your users complete and any user complete more workloads directly in Box. So this week, we're announcing a flexible set of Box native collaboration tools, Box Canvas, Box Notes, and Content Insights. With these tools, users can push the boundaries of how to easily collaborate on all the amazing things an organization does. They, they will be able to host interactive workshops, create detailed visual documentation, or curate published content, and they will be able to do that right within Box where the content lives. So to the points that Aaron made earlier about keeping content secure, reducing the points of entry for potential attacks and optimizing productivity, this integration of collaboration is essential for that as well. Additionally, as they begin to share content internally or externally, they will be able to get insights on how it is performing. So the content insights of tracking how the, the content is being used for sales, for marketing, for training, for all kinds of different purposes, we are extending the platform for tracking the and ana analyzing the performance of the content itself. And of course, with this toolset comes everything associated with Box, security, compliance, workflow automation, integration, and with the go-to apps and more. So let's drive you know, into a quick dive now into a few of these new capabilities. So with the all new Box nodes, we give users a secure real-time experience for a quick and seamless text-based collaboration where uh, nodes can also help teams tackle more extensive documentation, project management, and development type of tasks. The entire editing and collaboration engine has been updated, and we began rolling this out to customers mid-August, continuing through mid-October. So we're mostly now reaching the 100% rollout of that you know, product and the full innovation that we put into notes. Now, hybrid and remote teams need tools that go beyond traditional communication styles, beyond text and images. So we're very, very excited now to announce again and, and launch Box Canvas, our new visual collaboration and online whiteboarding tool. Canvas will be rolling out to customers in a public beta in mid-November with the emergence of the hybrid workspace where there's a lot of digital content being shared and distributed. Box new content insights feature releasing in the fall will also allow users to understand the content impact, as I was mentioning earlier, to see how the content is being consumed, how often, how much, which days, by whom, and at the same time of, of whomever else is consuming the content, where the analytics and insights are right at your fingertips whenever your team needs them, so you can make stronger content decisions based on the insights and not guesswork. So moving over to the workflow and box sign products, a critical part to empowering customers to work together from anywhere is the ability to transact digitally. So last year, and in general, we've been seeing through the pandemic, the adoption of more and more digital means to, to solve scenarios that used to be on paper. For that reason, basically, we, rocked, we rolled out BoxSign globally to deliver both unlimited electronic signatures in the content cloud and in signature extensibility via APIs and integrations. As you saw in the first half of the year, the sign team has been on overdrive delivering several critical features, including batch send and ready sign links. We're continuing that momentum, focusing on enhancing box sign to help address more complex and higher volume use cases, unlocking more, con uh, more content and cost saving opportunities, also helping you streamline e-sign workloads by making sign more extensible, both via third party integrations as well as APIs. And in addition to that, we are enabling enterprises to reduce complexity to deploy e-sign and content workloads at scale and in the content cloud. So now let's take a look at some of the key features coming soon on box sign. With custom branding, we're enabling customers to drive brand awareness and offer their clients, partners, and employees an enhanced on-brand signing experience. With multi-doc packages and signer attachments, we are um, basically unlocking sophisticated use cases that uh, allow employee and client onboarding contract management applications and more. In parallel, we've been working on extending the ecosystem of box sign integrations. In addition to our marquee integration with Salesforce, I'm excited to share that we're announcing box sign integrations in several areas, including contract lifecycle management, enterprise resource planning, robotic process automation, procurement operations, forms, and more. This includes partner integrations with UiPath, Appian, Cruise, Versafile, Sura, Jobform, and others. 
Additionally, we have integrated Box with Signix, a leading inaudible vendor that will help our customers supplement e-signatures with inaudible services. And finally, e-signature can be just a one step of a larger business process where we are accelerating the investment into tighter integrations across the content cloud. Integrating Sign with Shield and governance enables us to deliver differentiated solutions and workloads with built-in security and content retention. And we're continuing to build more and more capabilities into Box Relay that will provide the flexibility to deploy your automated content workloads at scale. So now, if we move to the security and compliance highlights, we tend to see three challenges when it comes to cybersecurity. First, the ensuring of a zero trust access model. Second, the preventing of data leakage. And third, the protecting of your organization against threats. Good news is that Box is uniquely positioned to help companies successfully navigate these challenges. So let's start with zero trust. Zero trust access is becoming ever more important because 61% of breaches last year leveraged credentials. That's why we're focused on providing the most robust identity and access management capabilities. So we'll be adding email-based MFA and backup codes as an authentication option, plus we're going to be bolstering zero trust access for box admins. Enterprises also have the ability to terminate and um, basically have termination of user sessions with programmatic self-service remediation via the API and leverage box shield detection rules to protect against account recovery threats, moving us towards adaptive access. Um, now, even better, Box is also adding group-based device trust, where we have policies to give us the granular control that our customers have been asking for. Lastly, we're also extending our security integrations in the Box Trust Partner Program with partners that are in the EDR and IAM, IAM space, where our customers will have better protection through real-time sharing and risk signals, dynamically enforcing zero trust access. As you know, the average cost for data breaches has reached an all-time high of 4.35 million per case, preventing data leakage of sensitive content becoming even more important than ever. So I'm excited to announce Ethical Walls, a new feature in the Box Shield portfolio to prevent the exchange of information between different user groups within an organization internally that also could lead to conflicts of interest. So this information barrier can be used to safeguard insider information, especially helpful for our financial services customers. That is in beta now and is in GA coming very soon. Now, we'll also be expanding our document watermarking capabilities, which is especially important for the media, retail, and entertainment customers. We're adding support for video files as they are one of the fastest growing content types on Box, growing about 46% year over year to more than a billion, billion videos. Last year, we introduced also malware deep scan in Box Shield, which is based on deep learning malware, scanning technology that helps basically security teams identify emerging and unknown malware types. And today, we're excited to announce that we've added coverage for new file types, including Microsoft Office. We also fine tune our detection model to lower false positives and we're improving alert event descriptions so SecOps teams can better respond to incidents. All of this is in GA now. So next one is uh, one of my personal favorite topics, ransomware. So as you know, ransomware has been uh, basically you know, in record highs now where researchers have recorded 935% year over year increase in double extortion ransomware attacks. To help counter that, we are the first and uh, basically first going to introduce a self-service content recovery tool for Box admins to augment existing ransomware recovery support for you know, these processes. Box admins will be able to more easily restore impacted files to a last known good state in a matter of minutes, bringing a recovery operation that normally takes weeks down to 15 minutes. And lastly, we'll continue you know, to enhance and continue to invest and extend our ML-based ransomware detection and impact containment with our zero trust security controls. As you know, security is only one of the sides of this equation, content governance and compliance being the other our customers tend to see two key challenges on this area. How to manage content through its life cycle and how to comply with industry and regulatory compliance. We're experiencing exponential growth of data, especially with hybrid work. So that's why these areas are essential in conjunction with security. So this is why this year we made substantial improvements to retention in box governance. We released modifiable retention to provide customers the flexibility that they asked for. And now they can easily update retention policies as business needs evolve. So going forward, we'll continue to make enhancements that include making it easier to export content under legal hold, adding trash disposition and, and actions that uh, accelerate the disposition uh, through using trash, and also having, uh, lastly, giving you basically and our customers the reporting and disposition insights that they were asking for. The second challenge we hear is the growing complexity uh, of the industry and the regulatory landscape. That is why earlier this year, we, we basically released GXP Sandbox. Um, the, yeah, basically, the GXP sandbox testing for our life sciences customers is essential where we expanded our global footprint with a new box zone in France. We, with that, we actually are helping organizations address the data residency needs in, in basically that need to stay within region for content storage. And for the US public sector, we also have received state ramp moderate authorization. And now we have box for Gov Slack integration. Um, I'm also excited to announce that we have a Fed ramp high with the authorization to operate the ATO from, from the VA. And with this authorization, which includes an independent assessment for over 421 security controls, 
It allows the VA to expand their use of Box for controlled and classified information. These items are yet another testament to Box's cybersecurity posture. So now let's switch gears a little bit and talk about you know, our admin improvements, where we are going to support Box admins with added controls, reporting, and also insights that they need to use to excel in the orchestration of their environment. We're focused on expanding rich insights to give customers quick and actionable information about their Box account. Rich insights with delivering analytics, visualization, and calls to action that give admins transparency into what's going on across their organization with the ability to easily take action on any abnormal activities or any strange elements that they find in their network. So now moving to the third pillar of the differentiation that I talked about and that I also mentioned at the beginning, we have platforms and integrations. We know how important it is to users to have the choice of technology that they use and what they work with. So we're making it easier than ever for customers to seamlessly integrate with over 1,500 integrations. You know, Box, without sacrificing any security or manageability of their content, has been able to integrate with all of these different applications while also adding elements to our portfolio, maintaining the neutrality that Aaron spoke about earlier. Starting with the new Box App Center, the all new, you know, fully renovated and released recently, admins can install any application in, you know, for their organization needs, and users can easily see which tools they have available to them, previously approved and selected by their administrators. So this empowers users to work how they want with the visibility and access to their network and everything we offer of the ecosystem of partners that we have with these 1,500 integrations. Now, another very important integration we have that is worth highlighting directly is our Box for Salesforce integration that lets customers access and manage their sales content directly of what they have in Box without leaving their CRM. There, users can request signatures with Box signed without ever leaving Salesforce. And coming soon, admins will be able to enable a custom folder structure in Box mapped to Salesforce objects and records directly. With that, they will also be able to search Box files across Salesforce altogether. So in addition, we have continued advances with our major partnerships as well. So I mentioned all the different key participants that we've had. Microsoft, for example, has been a key partner with exciting announcements and major enhancements that deepen how we access box files within Teams and how our customers can also do co-authoring on Office desktop files with edits auto-saved to box. Another important partnership is with Zoom, where we have new capabilities to save select Zoom meetings directly and those Zoom meeting recordings directly put into box. With Slack, we have the ability to set Box as the custom file store for the Slack instance. So if one of these integrations is quite what your customers need, Box platform allows them to also take advantage of our APIs and developer tools that can extend Box to meet any scenario. So our concept is you can integrate with any of these or, and use any of these 1500 integrations, but if you want to use the APIs, the functionality is available through our SDKs for you or your partnering software developers or other suppliers of software to integrate directly with Box functionality. So our platform is focused on continuing to simplify the developer and admin experience, which basically includes the following UI elements. So the UI basically is extended to developers. So the box UI features are all available to basically provide customer applications and custom applications and portals that are designed by third parties. The CLI automation library. So admins can automate repeatable tasks like user provisioning and zone assignments for users. Then the custom app insights. So developers can define and view the key information about the apps. So basically they get all the apps they create in their enterprise and they are all basically available from a single place. Then the sample app that um, which basically sample code, very common for basically simple common applications and use cases for development to take that from that library and accelerant for development. And then the enhanced platform reporting that allows for better API usage reporting and higher accuracy to help customers understand the box platform usage. So all of this is part of this continuous effort for basically going throughout the year to accelerate the time to value with box platform. Well, thanks for the time. I went through many different you know, components to basically uh, represent the different areas of all the things we're launching this year. So we are hyper-focused on building Box to be the most powerful and robust content services platform in the market across collaboration and workflow, security and compliance, and platform and integrations. So now, Aaron and I will be happy to take your questions. So let me now turn the presentation back to Cynthia for Q&A. Great. Thanks so much, Diego.